Hey, what's up? Jason here from Unity3D.college. Today I want to talk about real life coding versus TV coding. You know, the stuff that you see where you know, multiple developers or crime scene investigators, you know, they'll hop onto a computer, you know, maybe share a keyboard, and then write up some little app that's going to track the bad guys and or solve whatever the problem is and save the day. And I assume everybody watching this knows that that's not really accurate. And I mean, in reality, 0% accurate. A, a normal day of coding looks more like this. Yep, most of the time, you're not even writing code. You're not, sometimes you're not even looking at code. You're just sitting there thinking, trying to figure out how I'm going to solve the problem. Because really, programming, coding in general, game programming, non-game programming, all of it, it's all just about solving problems and it's really about figuring out what the problem is and what the best solution is. Usually you come up with a couple different solutions in your head and then start coding them and then find out that they didn't work right and go back to the drawing board and try another one. There's also a lot of just searching online. You know, if, if you're worried about like, hey, when I'm coding things, I find myself searching on Stack Overflow or Google or whatever often. Don't worry, I have yet to meet any developer that doesn't do that. You know, nobody is going to remember all of the code, all of the syntax, or you know, every single built-in method, every single function of, of the software that we're using. So we all look things up and look for good ways to do things. It's also a really good way to kind of learn. So if you're implementing a solution to something and you just do a quick search, you may learn a new way to do it that's even better. Now, even if you already have an idea of how you want to do it, usually what I'll do is kind of try to mock it up, do a little bit of searching, see if I find something better, and you know, pick the best option there. Another thing you find yourself doing a lot is just talking to other people. Now, in a game development company, that's usually talking to game designers or your QA team, and of course the other engineers on the project. You, you want to talk a lot to figure out what the game needs to be, what the designer's actual intent is, and how you should code up these systems. And that, that's a very important thing, too. Make sure that, you know, if you are working on a game, you really talk to the designers. Don't just take their, their documents that they've written up or their tickets that are, you know, in your tracking software. You really want to talk to them and understand what it is they're trying to accomplish. Have them kind of show you what they want because then you'll come up with the best solution. If you just go in with you know, some text written, it's very easy to you know, misunderstand and miscommunicate that and not really get get the whole point across. I mean, I'm sure everybody's seen this just with like text messaging. It's really hard to tell sometimes what people mean in a single message if they don't elaborate on it. A whole lot easier if you just talk on the phone and you know, just say, hey, can you explain this? You get that extra tone in the voice, the inflection, and then you get the ability to ask questions and really dive into the details and make sure that you do that. If you're working with game designers, don't avoid asking questions. You know, just ask as many questions as come to mind. Just keep going until you know exactly what it is that they want, or at least until you think you do, then code it and find out it's totally wrong. So back to TV coding for a minute. Why do they portray it like that? Why is it like, you know, everybody gets in, they have an emergency, and somebody instantly hacks up some little app in 30 seconds to save the day? I, I think the main reason is that if you really recorded people programming, you know, anybody who's not into coding is just going to sit there completely confused. It'd be like watching the lawyers in the shows read over the legal docs or go through the step-by-step -step court proceedings of everybody standing up, everybody sitting down, and then reading off all the things. It would be long, boring, and tedious. But luckily, that's not really what it's like for coding, though. So if you're the one that's doing the coding, it's not long and boring and tedious. It's just if you're watching somebody code and you don't know what they're doing, you don't know why they're doing it or what the hell's going on, it's going to be like anything else with that. It's It's just boring. But Doing the actual coding can be a whole ton of fun. And that's because you, you know, solve problems. You get to solve these problems. You get to run the program that you've written and see it actually do the thing that you told it to do. And a lot of times you also get to go through that process of failing and then learning why you failed and then getting that moment like, oh, 
oh wow that's awesome that's how you do it i figured it out cool and that's like kind of the, the biggest rush that you'll get in coding anyway i uh, i think that's enough about tv coding versus real coding but Hopefully this kind of gave a little bit of an idea of the, the difference and why they're so different for anybody that didn't know. Anyway, thanks again. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit all those buttons, and uh, only use one keyboard at a time.